is Michael Buffer for the introduction. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this is one of our co-featured uh, main events of the evening. Let me introduce to you first the referee, Larry Hazard. This bout scheduled for 10 rounds in the middleweight division. Introducing in the red corner, wearing the black trunks with gold trim, he weighs 159 and one half pounds, along with steak sandwiches and pretzels. He's the pride of South Philadelphia. His record, 15, seven and two, nine big knockouts. Ladies and gentlemen, top Tony Suero. And in the blue corner, wearing a red trunks with white trim, weighing a 161 pounds even from Chorera Panima. Undefeated in 16 professional bouts, 12 by knockout, introducing Nestor the Beast Flore. Now that's oh, the way to introduce fighters. Right. Buffer's wired tonight. <laughs> Regulations in the dressing rooms. Let me remind you, when I give you a command, I expect you to obey my command. Okay? Conduct yourselves with good sportsmanship at all times. I won't hesitate to penalize you if you fail to do so. You have any questions? No. Okay, shake hands. Come on, fighting at the bell. Okay, tough Tony Swero, 25 years old. Trying to get his pro career straightened out across the way. The number 10 middleweight in the world according to the WBA the man from Panama Nestor Flores scheduled for 10 and we will see if Nestor lives up to his nickname Nestor the Beast now what happens if he fights John Mugabe oh somebody's got to give up the nickname I guess and they are in the same weight class as a matter of fact so that is a possibility He's ranked 10th by the WBA floors, and of course it's interesting as I noted at the beginning of the show, he's been seen uh, very little in the United States, and yet with that high ranking, to say, uh, what does he have to offer? Because we don't know. According to his people, manager and trainers, he is a rough fighter who hits hard. They're trying to teach him to box more. Tony Suero can do a little of each. He can box, he can mix it up. And you never know what you're really going to get from Tony Swirrell when he goes in the ring. Sometimes he is indeed a brawler, and sometimes, as against Kevin Perry in the last fight, he boxed a lot, but just didn't do enough offensively. Admits that he wasn't busy enough and lost to Kevin Perry. Tony Swirrell himself has several times been just on the edge of maybe proving himself to be a possible top ten fighter, and each time takes a step backwards. Flores landing some good shots, left to the body, right to the head. That right, I think, uh, got the attention of Tony Swero. Yes, it did. Eyes open wide, and Swero backing up. Mr. Flores shows some power. We're midway through round one. Flores coming in a record of 16 and 0 with 12 knockouts. Last fight April 17th in Miami, when he scored right. a first round knockout Bring him over Bring Ernest him. Cyclone. They're in a testing ground here for Flores. Getting some recognition, some exposure, and just an idea of how good he is and what he still needs to learn. He's 23 years old. Swero gets a warning to keep his punches up. Several have strayed low in this first round. Swero trained by Carmen Graziano. Lived in Carmen's house for the last five weeks. He and Bavenzi, Giovanni Bavenzi, who's on in our next co feature. Has worked hard for this fight. And as Carmen said to us today, no excuses if they got beat, if they get beat by better people. No excuses. They're ready for this, this fight. Swirl's been busier here in this first round, but Flores has landed a couple of very big punches. 20 seconds to go in round one. A little redness under the right eye of Tony Swero. And again, Flores landing with a right hand. Nice jab by Swero as we come to the end of round one. Trunks. Nestor Flores in the red. This is round two, scheduled for ten. Good right hand, and Flores follows with a left. Step back, Kevin. Step back. 
there's been very little body punching from Flores. That's something Eduardo Navarro, his manager, said they've been trying to get him to do, although he hasn't really been in range to do it that much against Squirrel so far. He has an excellent left hook, and uh, Navarro said he's coming along. That they're really, they're, they feel they're teaching him boxing skills, and uh, he's much less of a brawler than he used to be, and he shows us evidence of some boxing skills. Most of uh, Nestor Flores' fights have been fought in Panama. Two have been fought in Miami, now for the first time in Atlantic City. Swirl's been able to get the jab in pretty effectively over the first two rounds, but it hasn't done any real damage. There is swelling starting under both the left and right eye of Tony Swirl. It's just in the beginning stages, but you can see it developing. Nice jab by Swirl. Flores, times looking a little awkward, and it just winds up with a with big punches, not putting much together in combination. He's obviously a patient fighter, Flores is. Swirl's going to the body. Some of those string a little low, but uh, that's partially because Flores is covering up so well. Midway through the second round, you saw Flores loading up with that right hand, pawing with a jab and looking to land a good overhand right by Swirl. There's the hometown crowd screaming. He had been going to the body. He looked at the body and threw an overhand right to the head, and it landed. Reminiscent of uh, what Ken Norton used to do. <laughs> but, you know, Flores just stood there. He just did, didn't react. Slapping left hand by Flores in there. Tony Swirl is having a good round. You just don't know if it's having any serious impact on Flores. Swirl is a gamer. He's right in there. Flores, the unknown commodity here. Nice slipping by Swirl. You know, they said this was a good barometer for Flores, and indeed it is. Yeah. Tony Swirl is a, a tough middleweight, and uh, he's a guy who comes in with a, an extensive bag of tricks. And he's shown Flores just about all of them in his first two rounds. And as you mentioned, a fighter who's fought a lot of good competition. Doug DeWitt, he's fought Sean Mannion, Roger Stafford, Danny Long, Mike McCallum. It's a good competition. It's an interesting list of fighters. We are late in the second round of our co-featured event. It's scheduled for 10. You're watching Top Rank Boxing. The belt line of Nestor Flores. Bang, there's the overhand right. And after that, Flores just kind of stood there. Back to the live action, round three. Tony Swirl on the black trunks, getting on the move. Check out scoreboard through the first two rounds. Light it up, and you see it even. First round to uh, Flores, second to Swero. I've got it dead even at one and one. Swero's corner feels he won the first round. They've been telling him he won the first two rounds. I agree with you. I've got it one, one, one. First round was pretty close, though, because Swero did land a lot of punches. Flores may be landing the harder punches. Flores is letting Tony Swero get off. And if you give Tony Swero confidence in a fight and let him get his momentum going, he can be very difficult to uh, to deal with. And don't forget, this is a pro Tony Swero crowd in this yes. arena. In the ballroom here. Good left Flores hook by Flores. That, that kind of buckled the knees of Tony Swero. No question that Flores hits hard. And what Swero has to do is make him miss and frustrate him a little bit. Swirl can be knocked out. Mike McCallum did it to him in April of 1983. McCallum, of course, uh, the top-ranked uh, junior middleweight right now, and a fighter who does indeed have some power. Also, Davey Moore knocked him out in 1981. First former junior middleweight champion. Another man with power. We're midway through the third round. There have been no knockouts here, knockdowns here. Nice countering by Flores. And Suero missed with that big overhand right again. Carmen Graziano, his trainer, wanted to, him to move to his left and use the left hook more. Instead, right. Suero has been throwing that right. He also cautioned Suero about trading with Flores and taking chances that you can win this fight by outboxing. Uh, be careful. Don't take unnecessary chances. Less than a minute to go in the third round. When Squirrel follows with the right, right behind the jab, he's able to land it. There's the jab landing again. He comes with the right behind that. He isn't landing that far. Good head movement by Squirrel as he comes in. 
Suero is probably in the best shape of his life, I would venture to say. He started fighting professionally in 1979, and things have gone uh, went downhill in 83. Half a minute to go in the third round. Suero fought only once in 83, and this is his third fight here in 1984. You know, Nestor Flores may yet hurt Suero, may knock him out, may win this fight, but right now he is giving Suero a chance to get his confidence going, and this is a confident Tony Suero. Final seconds of the third round. Lansing, right hand scores for Tony Suero as we come to the bell. As a puncher, but Tony Suero landed an excellent right hand in the last round. And there is Tony Suero up off the stool. A little swelling under the right eye. There's Nestor Flores, unmarked. Doesn't seem to be winded at all. This is round four. And a good matchup once again. Middleweight night here in Atlantic City. Rand Barkley winning a unanimous decision over Esteban Pizarro, an eight-rounder. Lansing left-hand scores for Suero. Nestor Flores has an impassive look on his face, as if nothing seemed to bother him much. He is taking his time in this fight for sure, but uh, he could take his time too long and uh, find himself in the short end of the decision if he doesn't hurt Suero. Flores not uh, afraid to exchange with Suero. He countered nicely with a right hand. looking very patient. The question is, will he open up? Is he pacing himself to go 10? His idol, uh, the idol of uh, Flores, is Roberto Duran from Panama. And interestingly, he has beaten a man who uh, Duran also beat, Wellington Wheatley. He beat him on a decision in the fourth round in October 15, 1983. And Wheatley was uh, one of the men Duran campaigned against when he had moved up uh, in one of his many division jumps. <laughs> One of the heavier divisions. Yes. That right hand by Flores might have been a little low of that last right. Flores certainly would like to become the next idol of Panama, obviously, to pick up where Roberto Duran left off. He's become a little busier here in this round, Flores, but they're still not putting that many punches together. The square is still doing more work. Well, he really doesn't have a jab to do anything with. He seems to be loading up with punches. The jab that Flores throws is kind of just paws it out, sticks it out, and doesn't do anything with it. Well, having no trouble moving in on Flores. Less than a minute to go in round four. You know, it's not that Suero has uh, hurt Flores much in this fight, but he's been landing good shots, yeah. and he's just being a pesky fighter in there, doing a, uh, a lot of work, staying busy, and even when he's not landing, it's appearing much busier to the judges. He's fighting a smart fight. He is really indeed. impressed. Hello, he, he wanted to do this against Kevin Perry, but what he didn't do against Perry, he just didn't punch enough. He yeah. fought a similar kind of fight, but didn't punch enough, and so Kevin Perry was able to walk away from here with a decision. See the clock winding down on this fourth round, coming down to 20 seconds to go. Harry Hazard is the referee. Tony Suero and Nestor Flores. We come to the bell, ending round four. Let's bring him up, Tony. Okay, let's bring him up. Ten. Middleweight's Nestor Flores from Panama on the red trunks. And from Vineland, New Jersey, tough Tony Suero on the black trunks. And Suero's fought a good fight thus far. Flores just doesn't seem to put it together. Hasn't seemed to open up yet. Most of the people here, and perhaps those watching at home, are waiting for Flores to open up. Like he's landed a couple of good shots, and they appear to have had some impact on Suero. He looks really strong, but just not punching yet. Flores, unbeaten in 16 pro fights, ranked number 10 in the world by the WBA, but relatively unknown commodity here in the United States. And after four rounds, he may still be an unknown <laughs> commodity here in the United States. He just hasn't shown us much offensively yet. Fans urging Tony Suero on each round. Suero goes back into his corner and asks trainer Carmen Graziano, what's the score, what's the score? And Carmen told him 3-1. 
after the fourth. You're in the lead. And That's I the way I have it. I agree with Carmen. It's the first time Carmen <laughs> and I have ever agreed on scoring. Morris opening right. up. He's rocked Suero with a couple of left hands following that right. Well, he'd like to make an academic floor as right now by knocking out Suero. He's got Tony in some trouble. He is hurt. Suero trying to hold on time up. He is a little glassy-eyed. Good slipping by Suero. Hasn't gotten hit here in this last exchange. He's done a good job. We're midway through the fifth round. But Flores opening up scores with a right hand. Suero exchanging with him. And there's a long time left to go in this round, as you see. So he's got a while to survive this uh, storm. First sustained attack by Nestor Flores. He lands with a good counter left hook. Boy, that one punch changed the complexion of this fight. Suero's doing a fairly good job, though, of uh, weathering this. He seems, can continue. seems to have composed himself less than a minute to go. In the fifth round, Suero circling and staying, trying to stay away from Flores. Flores and just stalking his man now, going after Suero, trying to cut him off. And all the conditioning Suero has done will pay off for him right now. Flores seems to know what he wants to do right now. Half a minute to go in the fifth round. Suero trying to, to circle away from the power of Flores and just collect himself. There's the good left hand by Flores. Does not follow up, though. Flores, good counter puncher. Less than 10 seconds to go in the fifth round. And a big round for Flores as he counters with a right hand. Suero has taken some punches. And the end of round five. Good round for Nestor Flores. Go back into the corner of Tony Suero. Carmen Graziano gets in to talk to him. We hit you and grab him, Tony. What do you mean, Tony? He shouldn't be that close, Tony. He should be on the end of your jab. He should be on the end of your jab. You're not. Go ahead. That's what I'm No, but you, you lost that round. He should be on the end. Just down, bend down. Oh. They look like Eddie. No, huh? Okay. All right. Good job, Tom. Relax. Relax, please. Tom, hold him with a jab. Stay where you can see his gloves coming. You know what he's doing? He's doing your back foot. Make sure you're going away from him. You got a hook. Hook right hand. Okay, leave with a hook right hand. Okay, jab. Every time he's close enough, Tom, knock him off balance. Master Flores changed the complexion of this fight with that left hook, that right hand, and then this oh. left hook. And, uh... Then later on, you'll see Nestor Flores, after he's had Swear on some trouble, kind of cuffs him with that left hand. But that first combination you saw completely changed this fight. Round six. Let's see how Suero comes back after the big round by Nestor Flores. Nestor the Beast Flores, ranked number 10 by the WBA. Let's check Al's scoring, see what he thinks through five. Well, now you can use that nickname with conviction because he's won the last two rounds, in my estimation, and certainly won the last round. That, uh, that terrific combination that he hurt Swear a couple times in that round. Round six. No one can accuse Flores of being wild or undisciplined in there. He takes his time about it. Very patient. But in that flurry that we saw, in that replay of that flurry, you can see when he opens up, he's got some punching power. Yeah, he does indeed. And, uh, I just think he, he punches so sparingly that it uh, doesn't give himself a chance to, uh, to really dominate a fighter. Oh, good right hand by Nestor Flores. Suero is still there, though, and that one didn't seem to have that much impact on him. Good chin by Tony Suero. I wonder what Flores thinks when he lands. He looks at the referee a little upset that uh, Suero spun him around. I wonder what Flores thinks when he lands that right hand and nothing happened. Suero didn't blink an eye. Now Flores is looking to time his right over the jab of Suero. Wasn't doing that earlier. Tony uh, using that jab, of course, as he was earlier. That's the midway point of the sixth round. There he drops the right hand in again. That one not as, as devastating as the one previous, but uh, he's starting to get that punch in Flores. Is. Suero's certainly aware of those counter punches. 
of Nestor Flores. He's felt the sting in the last couple of rounds. Less than a minute to go in round six. And they trade. Flores with glancing shots. Looks like Suela needs to throw that jab a little more. Good combination by Flores again. The right hand scoring. Suela's trying to get the jab in, but it's falling short in this round. He's landed some of them. Also, he's worried about that overhand right hand coming over the jab. And as his fight has gone on, Suela's jab has become a little slower and uh, giving more opportunity for Flores to land that punch. Time winding down in round six. There have been no knockdowns. Good, tough battle here between middleweights Tony Suero and Nestor Flores. Right hand toward the end of the round, uh, the previous round, and uh, that's a punch he's getting in with the regularity now. As the sixth round ended, Tony Suero landed a nice combination that his corner liked. And perhaps it will renew his confidence. He'd slow down just a little bit. This is round seven, scheduled for 10. Tony Suero from Vineland, New Jersey, coming in with a record of 15, seven, and two. Lands the right hand, and the crowd loves it. The expression never changes on Flores' face. You know, Edward, uh, Eduardo ne uh, Navarro, the manager of Flores, assured us uh, that his fighter was not a combination puncher. From what we've seen so far, he's a pretty accurate uh, assessor of his own fighter. Very few combinations from Flores. And the other thing that they've told us about Flores is that he's still learning. At age 23, he's learning how to box. They know he can slug. Nice combination by Suero again. Good straight right hand. Very impressively thrown by Suero. It's the punch that earlier in the fight was coming in behind that left jab. Now Suero getting busy. The jab looking good. The right hand scoring. Nice jab. Flores' right was taken on the gloves by Suero. If Suero keeps that jab in the face of Flores, he's going to really have a good shot at taking this fight. we come out here in round seven to do just that. And he slowed Flores down in the seventh round. He's kept him off balance. Good left hand. Can't hurt Flores. Oh. He's hurt. shocking turn of events. And the home fans go wild here in Atlantic City. Nestor Flores sitting down. And there you see. <laughs> he looks for some divine inspiration yes. on this one. Tony Suero. Tough Tony. Blasted out. Here is where Tony Suero hurt Flores. Hit him with the right. That left hook is the one that stunned Flores. And the mouthpiece of Flores will go flying with that right hand. At this point, oh, and after wow. that left is where Flores was literally out on his feet. And Larry Hazard, Larry Hazard, you know, people can talk about fights being stopped too soon. This is something that Larry Hazard understands very well. When a fighter is hurt and uh, he moves in appropriately, a different angle of that same action. And uh, Larry Hazard stepping in. And uh, after Suero had been hurt just around it two previously, came back to dismantle Flores. And the fans love it. Tough Tony Suero. <laughs> he has turned things around for himself. That is a big, big win for Tony Suero as he stops Nestor Flores in the seventh round. And the thing that is so impressive about that is as soon as he had his man hurt, he never let him off the hook. He was in there for the finishing touches and did it. Nestor Flores is okay. Certainly uh, a bit in shock when the fight was stopped, but it's a big win for Tony Swearer. Let's get the official time for Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, 
at 201 of the seventh round, referee Larry Hazard stops this contest. The winner by technical knockout, the prize, South Philadelphia, Tough Tony Suero. And the show of sportsmanship by Tony Suero, Nestor Flores, a disappointed young man. Still got a lot of work to do. Obviously, he's got more learning to do with tough Tony Suero, who has always been a great competitor, a game fighter, a man who was very busy early in his career. Last couple of years, it sloughed off. Come to you from Las Vegas, Thursday, July 12th at 9 o'clock Eastern, 6 Pacific, live from the Showboat Hotel in Las Vegas. Luis Santana will go against Felipe Canella, welterweight bout, and then Cubanito Perez uh, goes against Frankie Davis, fine junior welterweight bout. You'll see it live Thursday night, July 12th, right here on your Total Sports Network with Sam Smith and Al Bernstein on Top Rank Boxing. The gentleman in the ring here is called Tough Tony Suero, and there's a reason for that. You were hurt by Nestor Flores. It appeared in any case to us, and uh, I think that uh, a lot of us at ringside thought that perhaps you were hurt to the point where he might have been ready to take you out, and uh, you came back well. Hurt? What does that mean? <laughs> well, I guess he doesn't. I guess you weren't hurt during that fight. I was never hurt days. I've been days before. Okay. I could feel he was a thud puncher. He was a thud puncher. He wasn't like kind of like. The kind that hurt you, that daze you. Mm -hmm. I could feel like, you know, the kind like, not daze you, like the kind like, feel like you pinch, you know, or hurt. Okay. Not, not a kind like a, a, you know, a buzz, you know, where the drunk. Not All right, drunk. Tony, we will take a look at when you hurt Nestor Flores. Now, I don't think there's much doubt as to the fact that you hurt him. This was early in the yeah, round when you knocked him out. Right hand, left hook. The left hook was what really hurt him. He was a strong kid, yeah, good puncher, a very, it's a pleasure finding somebody of his caliber. Here's where you knock his mouthpiece out. Oh, I did do that? Oh, I did that? <laughs> you certainly did. Larry Hazard stepped in, and did you feel it was the appropriate uh, point for Larry Hazard to step in? Appropriate for me, yeah, because I feel like, <laughs> I feel like either he would have got hurt or something would have, it happened to him bad, I believe, because it was a minute left in the fight, right? It was 202? Right. And I was not tired. I've been training for five weeks living with Mr. Graziano here which is worse than the Broad Meadows, which is a prison. <laughs> okay, getting in with Nestor Flores was nothing compared to living with Carmen. Is that what you're suggesting? No way. Okay. I'd rather go to prison. In, the <laughs> in this fight, there were a couple things that you did, obviously, very well. One of what, which was you used your left jab extremely well, and well, you set things up with that punch. I worked on that because I, I seen the table the last fight, which you commentated, which I believe I won, but when I seen the tapes, I, I appreciate your opinion of the fight because you were right. But you put me down. Oh, that's but too that's bad. Maybe, that's that's a nice train one. harder and uh, more dedicated and live with Skinny Minnie over here. I felt good, you know? Okay, speaking of Skinny Minnie, Carmen Graziano is who he's talking about. Carmen, and what my, about his... And my other trainer that I worked, two trainers. This okay. guy, John, uh, Joe, Joe Mary, Joe Mary, M -A -R -I, took Joe. care of me. Okay. Good, and Jimmy Watson for the first two weeks. All right, Jimmy, both also good trainers. What about uh, Tony's performance tonight? Uh, how would you rate him? Obviously, he came back well. Was there anything uh, that you saw that he did really extremely well? Yes, he was boxing well. He had the control of the fight. He was watching punches that were coming at him. Tony's, Tony's probably the, one of the best athletes in the country. And if Tony trains like he trained for this fight, and if he gets a little momentum going, he's going to be the toughest guy in the division. There's no question about it. He's got an iron jaw. But I've all that for five weeks, which proves that. That's what I was scared about with power, you know, because that's why I didn't throw no punches, because I was scared of getting tired. But I was in pretty good shape, and I came right back from training, right into that. I was supposed to fight Gonzalez, which I was in good shape. I hurt my hand. Then I came right back to the gym. Okay, uh -huh. Tony, thank you very much. Congratulations to you. Let's go back to Sam Rosen. Thank, thank you, you, Al, and congratulations to tough Tony Suero from Vineland, New Jersey, as he stops Nestor Flores in the seventh round. Back with more top-ranked boxing in a moment. Hotel and Casino.